Today we will be discussing the properties, the behavior of acid and bases. This is probably the last module that we'll cover in Chem 1045, so it's just a great feeling to be able to say that. Who can tell me what are some of the properties of acid and bases? We will be discussing properties first. We will be discussing the theories of acid and bases. We'll look at Arrhenius, brunsted lowry theory, and Lewis theory. And we'll look at strength of acid and bases as well. Who can tell me some of the properties for acid and bases? What do you think? Acids are what? They have a sour taste. Yes, they're what? What else? Acids. What are they? Properties? They're dangerous. Um, I have in here some pictures of acid and bases. Is aspirin dangerous? Is Windex dangerous? Is detergent dangerous? Is fantastic dangerous? These are part of your everyday life. Yeah, anything in a moderation. You don't want to eat any of these. If you drink that bottle of Windex, then probably it's dangerous. But they're not necessarily dangerous. They're pretty useful. <laughs> and we're trying to understand them. Okay, so acid and basic solutions can be ingested. What's an acid that you ingest? Orange juice. What's another acid that you ingest? Lemonade. Are those dangerous? I don't think so. Another one. One more. Orange juice, lemon juice, what else? Vinegar. You put that in your salad. Okay, so these are part of your everyday life. Okay, so acids could be medications. Acetyl salicylic acid, aspartic acid, vitamin C, aspirin. These are all harmless. And a lot of bases are used as cleaning solutions. Windex is a solution of ammonium hydroxide. So these are part of your everyday life. Okay, so let's look at some properties. What are some common denominators of acids? We said they taste sour, yes. Sour taste. Okay, so if you taste lemonade, that's pretty sour. Some people put sugar in there, so it's not so sour. Sweeten it up. What else? They are what? Electrolytes. We remember what those are. Electrolytes are substances that conduct electricity. Yes, we remember those. They turn on that light bulb. So acids do that. They conduct electricity. Especially strong acids and strong bases will light up that bulb fully, 100%. What about their pH? The pH is below seven. What about litmus paper? They turn litmus, blue litmus, blue litmus, they turn it red. Blue litmus paper turns red. And of course, acids react with what? with bases, and those are called neutralization reaction. Okay, let's see some properties of bases. Compare them. What are some properties of bases? Do they taste sour? No, they taste bitter. They have a bitter taste. Okay, and I don't want you to taste Windex or <laughs> detergents, but they do taste bitter. Are they electrolytes? No. no? Bases are not electrolytes? Yes, they are. They are electrolytes. 
What else? The pH is higher than 7. What about if you use litmus paper? They turn what? Red litmus. They turn it blue. And of course, acid reacts with bases and that's called a neutralization reaction. We've seen those before. Okay, so this is not a new topic by any means and we are familiar with many of the properties. Let's move on to the theories that we are responsible for. There are three theories that we will consider in this course. Arrhenius is the simplest. So imagine three umbrellas. Arrhenius is the smallest of these umbrella. It is the simplest to understand, but it doesn't explain a lot. It's like Lewis does. It's very simple to do, but it didn't quite get us where valence bond did. brunsted lowry takes us a step further. We'll look at that. And Lewis is the most comprehensive of the three. Okay, so this would be three concentrical umbrellas, Lewis being the huge, the biggest of the three, Arrhenius being the smallest. Let's start with Arrhenius, wet our toes, with what does Arrhenius consider? Okay, so we're studying the theories of acid and bases, starting with Arrhenius. An Arrhenius acid is a substance like hydrochloric acid. Okay, we just finished a few weeks of Lewis dot structure. So if I ask you to draw the structure for hydrogen chloride, let's say a gas, hydrogen chloride, HCl, hydrogen chloride gas. Hydrogen has how many valence electrons? One, and Cl has seven, and we share them, so that's chlorine makes it to eight, and that's an octet. But if you bubble hydrogen chloride gas in water, if you put it in, in a water aqueous solution, this bond that is composed by an electron pair, is going to be broken. And the hydrogen no longer retains its electron. That red dot's no longer there. So a hydrogen ion, or a proton, is released. And what are you left with? A Cl ion, and that's called a what? A chloride ion. So you produce a chloride ion which is a Cl minus one, and you produce a hydrogen ion. Hydrogen ion, in the presence of water, can also be written as H3O plus, that's called hydronium ion, bless you. Okay, so some books write H plus, some books write H3O plus, they mean the same thing. Okay, so H plus together with H2O gives you H3O plus, hydronium ion. You have a plus one and a minus one, so this is an ionization reaction. And I only have a single arrow because I have a what? What did we call HCl? A strong acid. Very good. Okay, so if I have a single arrow, that means that if I have 100 molecules of Hydrogen chloride, all hundred of them will break up into ions. And I'm going to have a hundred hydrogen ions and a hundred chloride ions. As opposed to, if I consider HF. Is HF an acid? Yeah, it's an acid. So what am I saying an acid is? It's a substance that... Produces what? 
hydrogen ion. That's exactly what Arrhenius defines. But now I have an arrow back, meaning, is this a strong acid? It is not a strong acid, it is a weak acid, but that H ended up separated from the F, no longer a molecule, so these are molecules. That's a molecule, that's a molecule. They have covalent bonds. Electrons are shared, as opposed to, what are these? These are ions. That's an ion, that's an ion, that's an ion, that's an ion. Okay, so according to Arrhenius, the simplest definition of an acid is brought by us, by Arrhenius. An acid is a substance that when it's placed in water, and that's the first limitation, it's put in water as part of the definition. When it's placed in water, it increases the what? The hydrogen ion concentration. And the more hydrogen ion that you have in solution, the stronger the acid. Okay? So if I have <coughs> hydrogen chloride, that's a strong acid. And a strong acid has a single arrow. We saw that previously. As opposed to a weak acid. Which ones were our strong acids? Who remembers? Hydrochloric. What else? Hydrobromic. Hydroiodic. Very good. What else? Nitric. HNO3. Sulfuric. H2SO4. Perchloric and chloric. Chloric and perchloric were all strong. And all the other ones. Okay, so HClO4, HClO3, those are all strong. Strong acids. So HF is not in that list, therefore it's weak. Therefore, I'm going to write a double arrow. Therefore, I have ions in the same container. I have molecules. So HF is maybe 1% ionized. I have 100 of these molecules. Maybe one of them breaks into ions, the other 99, and covalently bonded. So by now, we should be comfortable with a concept of molecules with covalent bonds. And the uh, ions in which electrons are transferred. Okay, so if... If a hydrogen ion is produced, an ion H plus is produced, or an H3O plus hydronium ion is produced, that substance is an acid. Okay, so Arrhenius defines an acid as a substance that increases the hydrogen ion concentration when it's placed in water. An acid increases the hydrogen ion concentration when it's placed in water. What about a base? What is this term? mean to you? Mm -hmm. I put the double arrow because it's a weak acid, meaning these two people combine and they form this fellow. So my reaction, my reverse reaction is taking place. That's what the double arrow means. So I no longer have 100% ions. I have my molecules of HF, hydrogen fluoride as well. No. For this one, I do not have an arrow back. Why? But it completely breaks down. Imagine you have a peanut butter sandwich. Okay? And you don't have one peanut butter sandwich, you have a hundred peanut butter sandwiches. And then you open them up in both halves. All hundred of them are opened up in half. You no longer have them glued together as a sandwich. Okay? So this arrow back means that these two people combine to form that. These two people do not combine to form that. They all broke down and they all ionized 100%. So if you have 100% ionization, you have 100 molecules of these and all 100 of them end up as ions. All 100 of them broke that H plus from the Cl minus and you end up with chloride ions and hydrogen ions, that's a strong acid. Okay, but if you would have a substance that sprinkles a couple of these 
but all the other ones remained covalently bonded. That's a weak acid. Okay, so that's a big concept. This is an equilibrium. You have the re forward and the reverse reaction. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I had asked you to give me an example of a base. Tell me a base. <clears throat> okay, milk has calcium hydroxide, so what um, is the characteristic here? A base would be, give me a really common example of a base. What's a strong base? Sodium hydroxide, so if I have an AOH, do I put a single arrow or a double arrow? I put single. I have 100% ionization, and what do I write after the arrow? Ion with a plus charge of sodium, and what else? Ions of hydroxide. So if I have nothing but ions, plus and minus species are ions. I have ionization taking place, and a substance that ionizes in water to produce hydroxide is what Irene has defined as a base. So an acid is a substance that, when it's placed in water, it produces hydrogen ion, little hydrogen ions, or lots of hydrogen ions. But as long as hydrogen ion is produced, that's an acid, according to Arrhenius. And for Arrhenius, a base is a substance that produces hydroxide ion. Sodium hydroxide doesn't have a reverse reaction, so it's a strong one, versus ammonium hydroxide. If I have an H4OH, Yes, hydroxide is going to be produced together with what? Ammonium ions. But these guys combine and they form again an H4OH. So that's a strong versus a weak. So the weak means you have a double arrow as opposed to a single arrow. Okay? An acid and base is neutralized to give you salt and water. We said that earlier. So if I have HCl and I combine that with NaOH, the HCl reacted with uh, NaOH, and the hydroxide that's donated by the base reacts with the H+, plus that's donated with the acid to form what? Water. And the Na, that's donated by the base, combines with the Cl, that's coming from the acid, to produce salt. Okay, so you produce NaCl, this is not new, and HOH, or water. This is a liquid. Okay, so this could be an aqueous solution of hydrochloric and an aqueous solution of, and we've seen the that ionic reaction, which would be H plus and OH minus going to water. Okay, so this is the simplest definition. And it limits itself because water is going to be around. Okay, so if water is not around, according to Arrhenius, there is no acid and there is no basis, which is a limitation. Okay, so let's take this a step further. And we're going to move from Arrhenius to bronsted lowry This O has a funky little slash through German word name. Second definition, second theory, bronsted lowry Brunset Lori considers an acid as a substance that donates an H plus. But it says nothing about water. Okay, so an acid donates an H plus. On a base, we'll do what? We'll accept it. Let's see what this means. Okay. <clears throat> if you have 
a bronze at lori acid base i am going to have a substance like h f and i'm going to just do lewis really quick and now i'm going to write h o h and my octet for fluorine and for oxygen has been obeyed and now i am going to produce This guy is released, and where does it go? There's a lone pair there. That's a lone pair. So that's a negatively charged, uh, a region of negative density, <clears throat> electron density, negatively charged, that's going to be attracted and bringing that H plus in there. So this is left behind. So after the arrow, I'm going to write my fluoride ion. And instead of having seven, it has eight electrons. So it's an ion. And who else do I have? I have my water with all of the electrons and then the H got added in there so that it's a hydronium ion so if I examine what I just wrote which is a much better rendition of what's happening in solution which of these substance is donating a hydrogen ion the HF so this fellow is my acid it donates a hydrogen ion so I'm gonna call it acid one okay the substance that results after the acid donates the hydrogen ion after this happens is who the fluoride ion so that is gonna be a base so I'm gonna call that its conjugate base or base one now what's water doing? Water is accepting a hydrogen ion, right? It has a lone pair. And that H plus, that HF is donating, is accepted by the water. So that is also a base. But to differentiate it from base one, I'm going to call it base two. And once water accepted the hydrogen ion, what happened? A hydronium ion, this is called a hydronium ion, this is H2. is formed and that is an acid but it's a ac conjugate acid of base two which is acid two so these two guys go together and these two guys go together okay so brunstedt lori introduces a concept a very important concept which is a conjugate acid base pair Pair. So, what's my first conjugate acid base? HF and its conjugate base, F minus. Very good. What's another conjugate acid base? This one right here is my acid, and what's the base? H2O. Okay, so another conjugate acid base there would be H3O plus, and if I, that's my acid, these are my acids. If I release the hydrogen ion from there, what do I get? H2O. No plus, so I'm removing an H plus to make the base. Yes, do we see that? Let me give you another example. If I have NH3 and I am writing Lewis, by now I can do Lewis really quickly. Nitrogen is group 5, 5 dots, H brings 1 dot, 3 covalent bonds, 
and I'm going to add that with water. And I am writing water as HOA, showing every little bond. And I am going to produce N H H H H. Whoops. And my dots are still there. But that's a fourth bond. So that's an ammonium ion. And I also have. OH negative dot 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 a hydronium ion. Do we see in this second example an acid? Before the arrow, do I have an acid? Is any of these two an acid? Water is an acid. Why? Because water in here is donating a hydrogen ion and where's the hydrogen ion going to the ammonia okay so this would be maybe acid one and after water donated the hydrogen ion what's left the hydroxide so that's what base one that's a conjugate acid base pair do you see another acid base pair Again, you're looking at an acid by looking at a substance that releases, donates the sprinkler system of H+. Dumps an H+. On a base, accepts it. So where is another acid-base pair? Who's my acid? Is there another acid in there? No? There's no other acid? NH3 is an acid? Look at what NH3, did this guy release the hydrogen ion? Do I have NH2 and I get rid of this guy over here? NH2 minus? No, that's not an acid. That guy is doing what? That guy is, accepts an, a hydrogen ion, accepts an H plus. It's accepting that hydrogen ion right there. So that's, if it's accepting, it's not an acid, it's a what? It's a base. And to differentiate it from base 1, I'm going to call this base 2. And who's acid 2 then? The ammonium. Very good. Acid 2, this guy is releasing that hydrogen ion. And by donating, releasing, dumping that H+, NH3 is formed. Okay, so tell me the acid base pairs conjugate acid base pairs in this example who's my first acid water okay so you can write water as HOH or as H2O and what is its conjugate base OH minus so you release the hydrogen ion from water and what you're left is OH minus Okay, so a conjugate base of an acid is simply formed by releasing, donating a hydrogen ion. Tell me another acid-base pair. NH4+, plus, my ammonium, yes. These are my acids, so these are my acids. Ammonium. And what's the conjugate base of ammonium ion? You re remove, donate an H plus from NH4 plus. What do you get? NH3 without the plus. Do we see a pattern there? Let's say I have phosphoric acid. I won't write the equation. I'm just going to add it here. H phosphoric acid. What's the formula for, for phosphoric acid? H3 PO4 that's an acid what would be its conjugate base H2 PO4 what's wrong with H2 PO4 am I missing out something a charge and what charge do I need if it's losing an H plus 
If I add an H plus to this, I get to do that. So that's a negative. Let me give you another one. Okay. If I have this fellow acting as an acid, H2PO4 minus, what would be its conjugate base? I remove another H plus, so it's HPO4, negative 2. Another one. This is a polyprotic acid. This releases more than one hydrogen ion. HPO4, negative 2. Can release a hydrogen ion? According to Arrhenius? Yep. And what do I form? BO4, minus 3. So these are all acids, and these are all bases. Yes? Can ammonia be an acid? What would be the conjugate base of ammonia? I remove an H, so instead of three H's, I'm going to have two, and I need a what charge, guys? Minus. So yes, ammonia could behave as an acid or it could behave as a base. In my second example, I had ammonia as a base because it's reacting with water. Because it's reacting with a substance that's more acidic than itself. Okay? So, if ammonia reacts with hydrochloric acid, or with a stronger, uh, with a, I'm sorry, with, with a stronger base than itself, then it will release a hydrogen ion and act as an acid. Okay? Are we okay with this concept? Okay. <coughs> if I have, okay, so I have, Ac this substance accepts a hydrogen ion. So this substance is a stronger base. And this, I call that stronger base, base 2. And base 1 would be a what? A weaker 1. It's conjugate base. Let's look at the examples. On page 14-3, you told me conjugate bases, now I want conjugate acids. I mean, example, on page 14-3, give the conjugate acid off. Page 14-3, give, not the conjugate base, but the conjugate acid. Conjugate acid off. H2O. What would be its conjugate acid? Does H2O have a conjugate acid? What am I looking for? A substance that? This one is a base and I want H3O2+. plus. Very good. H3O plus. Okay, so that substance released a hydrogen ion that's formed as its base. The base has one H plus less than the acid. Give me a conjugate acid. Okay, so that's the conjugate acid. That's my acid base pair. Give me the conjugate. This is question three. Conjugate Acid for HCN. H2CN plus. Okay, so if you want the acid, add an H plus. If you want the base, remove an H plus. And you're there. Are we okay with that? Question five. If I have... 
HS minus reacting with HI. And I am producing H2S and I minus. Label my conjugate acid base pairs. Is this an acid base reaction according to Bronsted Lorry? Is somebody donating a hydrogen ion? Is somebody accepting it? We're going to ask you. Or you see. So you look before the arrow and compare it to what you have after the arrow. After the arrow, I have an I minus. Do I have this guy with an H accepting it before? The HI. The HI. So these two guys are a pair, aren't they? Who would be the acid? The HI. The HI would be the acid, so I can call that acid one and I minus would be base one are you okay with this so an acid is a substance that donates a hydrogen ion HI is donating a hydrogen ion and what it results is in its conjugate base do I see another acid base pair Okay, H2S and HS minus. Who's the acid? H2S is the acid. So I'm calling that acid 2. And once it donates the hydrogen ion, it gets what? It's conjugate base. So that's base what? Base 2. No big deal? We're okay? Okay. Let's look at Lewis. Okay, so we're back to the outline. And we said that Arrhenius considers an acid as a substance that increases the hydrogen ion concentration when it's placed in water. Bronsted Lorry didn't mention the word water. <clears throat> And I have substances releasing hydrogen ions and accepting them. And now I am taking the concept one level higher, Lewis. Lewis is the most general theory of acid bases, Lewis. Lewis defines... an acid as the most comprehensive, in the most comprehensive way. It says that an acid accepts an electron pair. It's an electron pair acceptor. On a base would be what? An electron pair, what? Donor. And every compound that we've seen have electron pairs, right? They have bonds. These electron pairs are sharing, being shared between a couple elements. So this is as comprehensive as we get. No drop in water aside. And let's see what Lewis says. If I have a substance like ammonia, and I have a bond, a bond, and a bond, and a lone pair. Can I just write the bonds? We know that you have three covalent bonds, electronic geometry tetrahedral, molecular geometry trigonal pyramid. And if I react that with BCL3, B, CL, CL, CL. Three groups around the central atom, it's trigonal planar, electronic geometry and molecular geometry both, because there's no lone pairs. Did boron complete the octet? What do you think? It has one electron pair, a second electron pair, that's four electrons and a third electron pair that's six electrons that's not completing an octet so this guy it's an 
electro bear hungry. We don't call it hungry. We call it acceptor. Because it wants an electron bear more to make it a octet. It's hungry for electrons so that it can complete its octet. An ammonia has a what? Has a lone pair. So this guy is a potential electron pair donor. So I don't have to have, if I have a hydroxide minus one, that's yelling at me, yes, that's a base. Sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, we know that those are bases. We've known that for a while. So if I have an OH minus, that is going to pretty much act as a base. But ammonia, it doesn't have a minus charge, it doesn't have a minus one, it doesn't have a minus two, or a minus three charge. It just has a simple lone pair. And by doing, by releasing, by donating that electron pair, ammonia, electron pair donor, is acting as a base. Okay, so ammonia is called a nucleophile. From the Greek, file means loving. Nucleus is a positive center. It wants a positive center, and it found it. And BCL3 is an electrophile. Now we really sound like we're in college. Fancy words. We are loving negatively charged electrons. Okay, so when a nucleophile and an electrophile get together, guess what? They react. And when they react, products are formed. And the N that only used to have three hydrogens bonded to it is now going to have a coordinate bond. Do we remember what coordinate bonds were? It's a bond. It's an electron pair that's being shared between two elements but it's donated by one of the elements. It's treating the other element. So that right there is a coordinate bond. There is no water in sight. This is not requiring water to be around. So is this an acid-base reaction according to Arrhenius? I don't think so. Is this an acid-base reaction according to Brunstead-Lowry? Nope. I don't have a proton moving from anywhere. Nobody's donating a proton. Nobody's accepting a proton. So Brunstead-Lowry doesn't consider this an acid-base reaction. So this is the most comprehensive definition for acid-base. This is an acid-base reaction according to Lewis. Because the substance is donating an electron pair, and that's your base. And a substance is accepting it, and that's an acid. The electrophile is your acid, and your acid accepts the electron pair, and it forms a coordinate bond. Are we okay with the difference between Arrhenius, Brunstead, Lowry? And in the test, I will ask you, I'll give you a reaction, and I will say, A, this is a Brunstead, Lowry acid base. B, this is Arrhenius, Brunstead, acid base. C, this is a Lewis acid base. D, two of these. Three, all three of these. So you apply your definition. For Arrhenius, you need to have water. And you need to have an increase in hydrogen ion concentration if it's an acid. From Brunstead Lowry, you have to donate a hydrogen ion. And for Lewis, check out your reactants and check out your products. And if there's a coordinate bond being formed, because somebody had a lone pair, and that lone pair ended up as grabbing, looking for that lone pair is hungry for the nucleus. And it's going to vacuum that negative cloud, is going to vacuum that positive center. That's an acid base reaction, according to Lewis. Question so far? Not so bad? Okay, so we're moving right along. Strength of acid and bases.
and this was C. Strength of acid and bases. So a few modules ago, we're in module 14. When we were in module six, I asked you to memorize strong acids and strong bases. And I said, later down the line in the course, I'll tell you why. I'm saying that these guys are strong. Just take my word for it and you'll get an explanation in a few weeks. Well, this is your explanation. Strength of acid and of course, bases would be right in there. <coughs> I am going to divide oxyacids meaning acids containing oxygen like H2SO4 like H2SO3 from binary acids. Oxyacids are also called ternary acids because they have three elements. They have the hydrogen, has the oxygen, and it has a nonmetal, sulfur, phosphorus, <coughs> okay, H3BO4. Binary acids contain how many elements? Two. Two. So I'm going to now talk about HF, HCl, HI. Okay? So I'm going to divide my acids into two categories. Let's start with oxyacids. Strength of oxyacids. And we start with um, HClO4. <laughs> versus HClO3 versus HClO2 versus HClO. You can have any oxy acid. I'm just starting. What's the name for HClO4? Perchloric versus chloric versus what was HClO2? Chlorus versus hypochlorous acid. Thank you. We learned nomenclature. I'm going to draw Lewis for these, and we are so good by Lewis by now, so I'm just going to put chlorine as my central element, and the oxygen is always surrounding my nonmetal. Okay, so the oxygens are going to be surrounded my phosphorus, or my sulfurs, or my chlorines, or my bromines, and the hydrogens are bonded to the oxygen. That's why they're called oxy acids. The hydrogens are not bonded to the chlorines. Okay, and I have a bond, and a bond, and a bond, and a bond, and a bond. Okay, and every bond is an electron pair, right? We know how to do Lewis really fast by now. And HClO3, I'm going to have how many oxygens? Three. HClO is going to have only one oxygen, and HClO2 will have two oxygens. Okay. So I'm defining an acid as a substance that releases a hydrogen ion. That's an easy one to remember. The faster it releases the hydrogen ion, the more readily that it releases a hydrogen ion, the stronger the acid. Okay? Of these four Lewis dot structures, and I didn't write this one, which one, let's put the OH up here. <laughs> Which one do you think will release the hydrogen ion the faster, and why? Which of these four is the stronger acid? What do you think? So you know that this guy is weak, and that these guys are strong, therefore, what's the pattern? Okay, so we analyze, and that's going to be... <laughs> these are strong acids, the other ones are not. So what's happening? These substances are releasing a hydrogen ion. Look at what's happening. This guy is leaving. Or this guy is leaving. And when they leave, when the hydrogen ion is donated, that is the condition that we need to meet to behave as an acid. If H is breaking a hydrogen ion, Cl is a very electronegative element, right? And you have an oxygen, which is also electronegative. So that's a polar bond. So is that one. So is that one. So is that one. Oxygen has an electronegativity of 3.5, right? So it's very hungry for electrons. 
and it wants to take electrons away from chlorine. And chlorine itself, it's pre electronegative. It has an electronegativity value of 3. Not as electronegative as Cl, but pre electronegative. And chlorine has one oxygen, a second oxygen, a third oxygen, and a fourth oxygen. They're always like having four kids and they all want money for this, for that. I want an iPhone, I want a car, I want this. And you are poor chlorine goes like, I want electrons too. I'm very electronegative. Who's the only fellow in this whole structure that is ready to let go of its electrons? The H. And when it leaves its electron behind, the CL is going, thank you very much. When CL with the four oxygens adds as an acid, this is its conjugate base, correct? I'm dumping an H+, plus. I'm releasing, I'm donating an H+. Plus. So that chlorine that has four hungry oxygens around it is going to let go of the hydrogen ion so much more readily than this guy that only has one oxygen. <coughs> okay, or than this guy that has one, two, three oxygens. Or that this guy that has two oxygens. Okay, so the more oxygens around the central atom, the stronger the acid. Okay, so that's an easy one to remember. As the number of oxygens is our oxyacids increases around the central atom, acidity increases. Now let's say I have another series. I have HClO4 versus HIO4. They both have all four oxygens around the central atom. And I ask you, of these two, second example, which one is stronger? What do you think? HClO4, why? Because chlorine is more electronegative than iodine. And this guy is gonna be released, donated so much faster so chlorine can have its electrons than if you have an element that is not as hungry. Okay, so this guy is going to be released so much faster, making it a strong acid. Yes, so far so good? Yes, I didn't lose anybody? Good. Now, the stronger the acid, let's look at the conjugate bases. This is the conjugate base. That's the conjugate base. That's the conjugate base. And that's the conjugate base. The stronger the acid, the weaker the base. So once you release the hydrogen ion, you don't want it back. Okay, my, somebody comes visit me, my in-laws or something, and I, once they leave, I say, thank you very much, goodbye. Okay, so once the hydrogen ion is donated, it's released, this guy is a base, yes, in theory can accept it, but it's going to be a lousy base. Okay, so the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. So the strength of acid or bases can be figured out by the ability of donating or accepting the hydrogen ion. The conjugate base of HClO4 would be HClO minus. The conjugate base of HIO4 would be what? IO4 minus. Which one is a stronger base? IO4 minus. Weaker the acid, the stronger the base. Now let me leave you with one second category. Let's. So we did oxy acids. The greater the number of oxygens, the greater the acidity. You got that. Or the greater the electronegativity of the central atom, the greater the acidity. Okay, we, I didn't write that down, but we said it. As the central atom increases its electronegativity, the acidity also increases. Chlorine is more electronegative, more hungry for electrons, so it's going to kick out that H faster than the iodine, which is not as hungry for electrons as chlorine. Now let's switch this around and talk about binary acids. Binary acids. If I ask you HI, HCl, 
an HBr. Which of these acids is stronger? What do you think? And I want you to think. And we look at a chart and group seven elements, you have fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. How many people think I'm hearing HCl? Let's call this choice A, choice B, choice C. Which is stronger? B is stronger. How many people think B is stronger? A lot of you. How many people think A is stronger? Nobody. Did we read? Well, what about if I tell you HI is stronger? And now I want you to tell me why. Why would HI release a hydrogen ion faster than HL? Because it's size. So we don't just look at one factor. Electronegativity was just addressed and that's the one that's stuck in our head. But what happens here? I have HI. H is bonded to I, right? I, remember last time we talked about bond strength, bond energy. Iodine, electronic configuration of iodine is the fifth energy level. Iodine, big humongous fellow. The 1s in the first energy level, 2s, third, fourth, fifth energy level. That's when you have the 5s2, 5p5. So that bond is huge. And the hydrogen has the one electron bonded to the 7 of iodine. As opposed to what? HCl. HCl is what? It's filling up the first, second, third energy level. So that is a lot stronger bond. The bond length. This is a bond length. It's a shorter bond. It's a stronger. If you're going to break a stick, if I have this meter stick right here, and I'm going to break it, I can just go back and break it. But if you give me a stick this big, and I want to break it, good luck to me. Okay, so if my stick is not one meter long, but one centimeter big, it's not very easy to break, is it? And by talking about an acid, I'm talking about the ability to release a hydrogen ion. So the bond strength, shorter bond length, stronger bond, higher energy, longer bond, weaker bond so the weaker the bond the more labile so HI is a much stronger acid than HBr which is stronger than HCl which is super stronger than HF HF is tiny fluorine is a tiny little element so now we know electronic configuration we tie that into Lewis dots we tie that into bond strength and we tie that in to acidity so finally, if I ask you the ability of bases, if I make conjugate bases, conjugate base of HI is I minus BR minus CL minus F minus. Of these bases, which is the strongest? Strongest, weakest. Much stronger than anybody else. The stronger the acid, the weaker the base. We're going to leave it up to here. And remember next time we have a test.